Hello, everyone. Welcome to the COPS update. I'm Justin Santa Barbara. We have uh, almost all the, the COPS maintainers here that are going to sort of co-present this with me. And we also have a, a great, uh, hopefully, a great section at the end for audience participation. So we hope you will also share your views. This is uh, more of a, this is a, an update, a project update. So, oh. Sorry, pardon the uh, button. <laughs> Can you hear me now better at the back? OK. So we are going to have a section at the end uh, for participation. Uh, and this is a project update. So uh, please remember to participate. And please ask questions along the way. Um, and we're going to have a lot of COPS maintainers with me co-presenting this, this update. Um, so we have a couple of sections uh, which we're going to cover. And there's that Q&A at the end. We're going to talk about what we want to see in 2020. And I really want to hear what you will want to see in, in 2020 in, in COPS. Um, but I wanted to start with a little bit of uh, sort of the existential question, like why COPS? Why does it matter? Uh, like why are we all spending so much time building this thing? Um, there's sort of the superficial answer, which is primarily it is, it is very important to, to build a tool that lets everyone have a great open source Kubernetes experience. So that's sort of the easy answer. And then I think the more interesting answer is, uh, it, from a project perspective, uh, it's super important that open source Kubernetes is easy to install, that there is a way you can go to you know, some place on the internet and get the, the software running without having to go to a vendor, uh, without having to do all of these uh, closed source software. It should be an end-to-end -end open source experience that is, is easy. Uh, it means that anyone else in the ecosystem has to build things uh, on top of that. You can't just, or it is, it is a much harder commercial proposition to just propose something that just packages Kubernetes together. And so like a lot of us have, or have scars from previous projects that didn't take this position, and where a lot of the, the providers ended up just building um, sort of the very base functionality that COPS offers. And I think it's wonderful to see like all this ecosystem that I don't want to take full credit for, but like, you know, that, that things like COPS and Kubespray have made sure that everyone is building higher level tooling, which is super important. And uh, it's also not enough to just have building blocks. Building blocks are super important so that we can have freedom for everyone to build those tools, but we also need those tools to be assembled for you. So we need building blocks and we need the building blocks pre-assembled. And COPS and Kubespray and others went off and built the full solutions and the great thing is we now understand, we have a good grasp on what those building blocks should look like. And we are like commu uh, collaborating as a community uh, in SIG Cluster Lifecycle and in other groups to build those building blocks, having proven them in tools like COPS and Kubespray and others. So that's why I think COPS matters both from the point of view of like, let's give a, create a great, great tool that everyone can use, but also it really is very important to the health of Kubernetes as an open source project. And with that, I will hand over for the next section to Peter, who is our newest, uh, or one of our newest maintainers. As of uh, a couple this of minutes morning. ago. Uh, hi, my name is Peter, uh, COPS contributor. I'm going to talk about the COPS releases. Um, raise your hand if you wish COPS released sooner for each Kubernetes version. OK, that's about what I expected. Um, just to uh, describe where we're at and where we want to be, um, we, we really want the COPS.0 minor releases to be ready for production. And our goal is to release COPS um, after each Kubernetes minor.0. Um, specifically, we need to test to make sure you know, that it's compatible and that we want the Kubernetes release itself to be stable, which we try to aim for the .2 or .3 patch release, which typically correlates with somewhere around two to three months, or yeah, one to three months. Um, and we also need to make sure that um, the ecosystem around Kubernetes is also working with it, and that includes stuff like the add-ons, the CNI providers, uh, and so it's, it's a lot of uh, testing. Some of it's automated, some of it we need feedback from uh, users testing our beta releases, alpha releases, all very helpful. Um, so to help uh, visualize the situation we're in. Uh, I made this graph that shows the delay uh, between 
Kubernetes.0 releases and COPS.0 releases. And you can see uh, it's going the wrong way. <laughs> and so the, the peak was 113, where we, uh, the etcd2 to etcd3 upgrade uh, made things pretty complicated and took a lot of time to test and make sure we got it right. Uh, and so the good news is that since then, uh, we're getting back to where we want to be. Um, we released COPS 115 uh, Tuesday, is that correct? So go out there and install it. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, yeah, we're trying to be, you know, 50 to 100 days. Uh, we're hoping to do an alpha for, we released a new alpha for 116 earlier this week as well. And we're hoping to have a 117 alpha before the, the, before the Kubernetes 117 stable, for those of you that really want to live on the bleeding edge. Uh, so that'll be coming soon. Uh, and next, uh, Mike's going to talk about docs. All right. Can you guys hear me in the back? We didn't test this. All right, cool. Um, my name is Mike Splain. Uh, I'm also one of the uh, many maintainers now we have on board. Um, and I work for Sonos. So I don't know how many of you have ever tried to go look at our docs. Um, you know, especially uh, Sig Docs here at, on Kubernetes has done a fantastic job iterating over the site for years now, right? Uh, and the COPS docs have kind of stayed the same for a while. Um, so, you know, they kind of look something like, like this, and then they, you know, that goes on forever. <laughs> like, you know, you just go into the docs directory and bam, right? So, um, you know, as, as a user and a contributor, I, I felt that pain. You know, I just go in and I search and then I select only markdown type and then that's how I found my docs, right? Uh, and then sometimes, unfortunately, you'd find the same thing in like three different places and, and so we're trying to solve that. Um, and we're trying to solve that in, uh, you know, in a lot of different ways. Um, but the main things we're looking at are, you know, the versioning. Uh, we don't really version our docs. What's in master is most of what everyone looks at, uh, but you never know what, where the feature landed or if the feature flag exists with the version of COPS or the version of Kubernetes you're trying to use, right? So we're working on solving a lot of those problems. Um, it's not indexable. It's not easily searchable, like I was saying. Um, and, and frankly, uh, I, I recently found one of our graphs was in three different places, and it didn't need to be. Um, so we now have a doc site. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, there's the URL, cops.sigs cates.io. Um, this is pretty awesome. Um, uh, please go take a look. It even has search. Yes. Um, it's still not great, but it's there. Um, that was the first hurdle. Um, so this is officially deployed through the Kubernetes organization on a Netlify site, which also means every time we go to build it, if anyone wants to contribute, you get a Netlify site that you can see your change changes on. So it's pretty easy to just, you know, work on, work on docs. Um, so we built on top of ALEBDF's uh, work. I don't know, are you here? Oh, okay. He was, he's around the conference, um, and uh, he really started the work on our doc site. Um, it, you may look, notice it looks like a lot like Nginx ingresses. That's because that's his project. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so he, he laid the groundwork, really got this going, uh, and now um, we tried to do a lot of refactoring to remove the duplication and kind of get it into you know, a better place. So um, we also have an issue open there at the bottom, that issue number, that is where I'm trying to keep a lot of these docs, bigger high level ideas um, you know, changing going forward. Um, so upcoming work, uh, we're going to keep cleaning things up. I'm hoping to, you know, keep up with the good uh, code policies of deleting more things than you add, <laughs> you know, because we, we have a lot of things that need to be updated and modernized. Reduce some of the spread, you know, because it's, it's kind of, you know, we need to bucket some of these things. COPS does so many things and it does it pretty well that we need to make sure we document all of those things in the right places uh, and make it easy to find. Um, prettification, which I actually looked up, is a real word in the dictionary. Um, so we, if anyone out there is a graphic designer or really good with CSS, uh, let me know. Uh, because we are not good at it, uh, and I want to redesign the whole thing eventually and make it really, really prettified. 
Um, we're going to consider moving to Hugo, since that's the direction most of the Kubernetes orgs put their docs. Um, it gives you a lot more customization and kind of lets you kind of point people from the GitHub method of, you know, looking at docs over to the docs site much easier. And of course, we're always welcome to more ideas. So um, that's some of the work we're doing with the docs. All right, up next, I think we're going to look at COPS features. Yeah, I think... I think I'm going, to, I'm going to quickly tear through some of these features, and I think sometimes some people are going to jump in on some of them, which are important to them. Um, in fact. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we are uh, Kubernetes conformant. I don't know how many people were at the, uh, uh, the, 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 the meeting on, on Monday at the, or Tuesday early morning. Uh, COPS was up on the big screen, so that was pretty cool. Uh, so we're conformant up to Kubernetes 115. Uh, we will be Kubernetes 116 conformant soon. Thanks for all you do on that, that's great. Uh, we finally have etcd3. I, I hope this is the last time I have to talk about etcd3. Uh, I suspect it is not, but I can, I can hope. So that was, that's a big blocker that has sort of slowed us down and a big contributor to that delay, and hopefully getting past that will help us a lot on the project. I think, Ryan? Yep, um, I'm Ryan, uh, I'm one of the maintainers. I work for Granular. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about, um, if you guys aren't aware, I believe in 1.12 we landed mixed instance policy support for Amazon. Um, so you can now mix in spots in with your on-demands, also mix in multiple instance types. Great way to go save some money on your clusters. If you're not using it, definitely check it out. Um, Rodrigo did a lot of work on that, so good job. Thanks. Uh, I see some of the people that did this work. Thank you to the people that did the, there you are, Derek, Derek right? Yeah, thank you, Derek. But OpenStack support went beta in the last, within the last year. And uh, AliCloud, some people are working on that. I don't know if any of you are here, SpotInst. Uh, and uh, GCE is getting closer and closer, and I, I hope that next year will be the year I can actually say it is, it is ready, uh, hopefully before then. But uh, we are getting it everywhere. It's, uh, COPS is definitely not just a tool for AWS. Uh, it is uh, a, a tool for, cop for installing Kubernetes everywhere. Uh, you may have noticed that the API group for uh, COPS uh, kinds, I guess, changed for, uh, from COPS to COPS.case.io. That was in support of this move to uh, allow, allow us to register them as CRDs. This is a super important stepping stone for a bunch of uh, other efforts, such as support for cluster API and generally using more of the operator controller pattern. Um, so we've, I think, again, cleared the hurdle there, and now hopefully we'll start to see some payback, uh, and you'll see that some of that reflected in some of the wish list items. And in particular, one of the things we had to land, which again is an enabler for that, is this controller. Uh, so you'll notice a new component uh, that runs on your control plane now. Uh, it, it, we had to introduce it to enable compatibility of labeling of the nodes in a secure way. Essentially, COPS one, sorry, Kubernetes 1.16, uh, they locked down the ability of Kubelet to self-label uh, security-sensitive uh, labels on the nodes. It is a potential security issue. It's sort of a blast radius argument. So, but COPS has a controller now which can securely apply those node labels so that you, we don't break anyone, but now it is more secure. Uh, so we had to do that as a first step, and now we have a long-running uh, controller where we can do ongoing reconciliation for things like cluster API or cluster add-ons, which brings me to our wish lists. So we're each going to do our little wish lists, and then after we, we get through them, uh, which is going to take a little while because some of them are a little long, uh, we want to hear your wish lists. So be thinking as we go through this what you want to see in, in 2020. And it is a wish list. These are personal. These are not uh, com neither commitments nor necessarily entirely correct, and don't worry about offending anyone, so these are wish lists. <laughs> so I want to see uh, cluster API support for nodes. I want to see us get that going. Uh, I say for nodes because it's a great place to start, uh, just on the worker nodes rather than on the control plane. I do hope we get it onto the control plane uh, later in the year, but the priority, I think, should be for, for nodes. Uh, cluster add-ons is a project I'm also involved in where we're sort of trying to get more uh, split, out the ability, split out the components that run on your cluster that are required, but not necessarily Kubernetes. Things like core DNS, um, things like kube proxy, all these pieces, the node local DNS, that's probably going to be the first one. 
so that they can be reused across other uh, components in the, the CNI providers. They can be reused across the whole ecosystem of tools and so that we also don't have to do a new release of COPS every time, for example, there's a, a release of the Calico CNI or the node local DNS, but rather they can be released sort of independently. Uh, I want to, I said, probably, probably not the last I'm gonna mention etcd. There is this etcd ADM project, uh, which we started and this is a building block that we are extracting from COPS and we wanna try to get etcd manager into etcd ADM. That's been the plan all along. Uh, it was sort of held up for some other reasons, but hopefully that will happen in 2020. I want to finish GCE support and uh, I wanna move all of our artifacts to this uh, official location which is artifacts.kates.io or the uh, Kubernetes uh, image repositories. There is, that's the working group Kates Infra is doing a wonderful job of, of setting up processes by which we can securely promote or promote and distribute images, uh, both container images and binary images. So that's what I wanna see in 2020. I can't remember who's up next. It is GeoJazz, Eric. Hi there. Um, I'm Eric, uh, and I'm also one of the uh, maintainers. I work with uh, the COPS team. Um, I'm also at Google with uh, Justin. Um, I threw these down at the very last second, so, uh, but I'm, uh, these are the things that I'm interested in. Um, we have a lot of sort of historical stuff that's left in our code base uh, that I would love to see uh, be deprecated. Um, I think that we can move beyond some of the, the like, really old stuff. Um, one of the big things that I'm also interested in, in is uh, developing COPS in Docker, so doing remote builds um, and having that be spelled out more uh, easily, either in the documentation or uh, just having a, a tutorial ready to go. Um, and like others have said, the re release cycle is important to me. Um, I think that being able to deploy the latest version of Kubernetes is pretty important. Um, and a personal thing, of a goal of mine that I've had for many years is to make it make us less reliant on Justin, not because we don't love him, but because he has too many other things to do. Um, and I still think we are pretty tied to him. Um, and I think we could all agree about that. Um, and the, other, the other two items um, I think have already been spoken, spoken about, um, but um, yeah, I think collaborating with uh, the rest of the community and uh, working to uh, to pull out the parts of COPS that uh, make sense um, and to, uh, to really become, you know, first-class citizens in, uh, in the, uh, the community. Um, so, that's it. Thanks. And Mike. I'm good. All right. So, for my list, uh, they, they, I think someone even pre-put this up here that I always want more contributors, and I think we can all say that. That's why we promoted three people today from reviewers to approvers. Um, so we want more people involved. Uh, you don't have to be officially recognized in any way to start reviewing PRs, just to you know, give you my pre-ramble. Um, so we love contributors. We love people asking questions. Why does this exist? How do we get you know, more people involved? Why can't we move faster? Absolutely, talk to us. Uh, more docs work. I hate docs. I hate working on docs. That's why I'm doing the docs, to make that better. Um, I also, uh, in line with some of the other things people have said, I think we should move more towards Bazel as much as we can. Anyone that has tried to build COPS knows that uh, Bazel is way better than some of the old way we build things. Uh, so we should really kind of deprecate a lot of the old things, anything we can, uh, and push forward with uh, Bazel Bazelifying as much as we can. Which is, it's basically all Bazel. It's just finished the last mile. Uh, moder modernization and deprecation, um, you know, between the people in the room here and everyone that's gonna watch this, we really shouldn't be running Kubernetes 1.6 anymore, everyone. Let's be real, you know? <laughs> um, so there's some of those things that we should make a best effort to say, hey, we get your use cases, but you really shouldn't run COPS 1.15 with uh, Kubernetes 1.6. You know, like there, there, there are some, some limits, um, you know, when it comes to testing, all of those different things. So there's, there's some code that we can remove uh, and we wanna, we wanna work on a deprecation policy that's, that's a little more public. Uh, right now, we technically support many versions of Kubernetes, but we officially support three versions of COPS. That's our official uh, deprecation policy, uh, which is the same as Kubernetes core. Um, so we need to work on some of those, uh, those end the tail ones. Um, also things like NLB support if in front of your API servers, things like that that we really should have, that's where I wanna spend some time as well. Um, and I put this in a little bit of a different way than everyone else, but I don't want to have a problem if Justin were to get run over by a bus. 
Thank you. Uh, I have a few items of my own. Uh, AWS recently added support for uh, pod identities, which uses uh, Kubernetes service accounts tied to uh, IAM roles more natively rather than the, the instance metadata proxy solutions that are out now. So I want to uh, build in support into COPS for that so you can easily uh, add a field and then that gets set up for you. Uh, I want to increase our end-to-end -end test coverage. Uh, right now we test a handful of different configurations, but um, there's always you know, more CNIs, more distributions, more um, testing upgrades, testing additional add-ons like Core DNS and all that kind of stuff um, that, is, that people run into when they're using COPS and that we need to test so that we can have uh, more confidence when we're releasing and that will help us release faster, hopefully. Uh, also, the, uh, the release process itself, bringing that into uh, CI, um, and uh, a goal of uh, making COPS build Kubernetes clusters that are more secure by default. Um, there are some uh, sys benchmarks um, that have recommendations, and uh, we, our aim is to make COPS create clusters that pass those recommendations. Uh, I'm Rodrigo. I work for Pinterest, and I'm also one of the COPS contributors. Uh, I want to work on per-node uh, Kubernetes versioning, and this comes with, uh, we run cluster autoscaler, and due to that, when doing various updates, we've seen some issues that having the ability to upgrade and downgrade each node group, uh, node group separately would solve for us. Uh, the other issue that I really want to work on is uh, faster cluster rolling upgrades. As we've scaled to thousands of nodes, the single node uh, upgrade isn't really doing it for us anymore. It's way too slow. Uh, I also want to add support for other container runtimes, specifically for me, Containerd and Kata, for various security purposes. And uh, the one other thing is we've built tooling around COPS, and it's all built on, uh, on top of Go. And I would love the ability to import COPS itself instead of having to shell out to execute those. So uh, some of the things I'd like to see uh, in this next coming year, uh, continuing to keep pace with our uh, Kubernetes releases. I think we've made a vast improvement now, but just keeping that momentum up. Um, like I think everybody else probably in the room improving our update process, whether that's through faster rolling updates or some other changes. Um, support for the new cluster API, continuing, the, continuing that now that we've got that built in. And uh, I'd like to see support for Windows nodes just because EKS launched it and it hurt my little ego a little bit, so. <laughs> That's it. We've all, we've all said our pieces. Sorry. We've, all, we've all said our pieces, so uh, I think it's now over to you. We want to hear what you want to see. I think there'll be roaming mics. Um, I see a hand go up immediately at the back. Should we? Uh, thank you so much. So one one thing is that uh, regarding the SC3 uh, upgrades, I mean, it's great that we're planning to do uh, better rollout processes, but for my wish list is not only the processes, but also better documentation on how to do upgrades, uh, because what really created FUD for us is that uh, when we read the documentation of uh, Calico switch of CRDs, and one of the lines was, uh, we therefore recommend rolling your nodes as fast as, fast as possible, that that created really like actually frightened us a little bit. So if you if if there was like a better documentation of saying, oh, this is how you would you know upgrade to make sure that your app doesn't get affected, a little more detail uh, that would have created less blood flood. So it would be great if we could have that type of documentation and uh, or even best practices documented. Yeah, I think I think that's yeah, that's fair. I think yeah, it was it was a pretty brutal upgrade, and I I touch wood hope that we don't have that again for a very long time. Um, yeah, we did. We did the. We didn't have a lot of choices, and we did the best we could. But yes, I think having like like very much like more user focused docs, and I think that would be also a great place to ask questions. Yes. And contribute in that way. Yeah, where we aren't. Yeah, like like Eric said, but pointing it out is like half the battle. Like knowing that that knowing that that is not enough is is good. Thank you. 
so I kind of have two things. The first one sounds like two, but it's really one. I apologize. Uh, given our security requirements for our infrastructure uh, at Twilio SunGrid, uh, we run on-prem and in AWS, and we have DXGs between the two uh, environments. And so we end up having to like wrap a pre-COPS phase and a post-COPS phase, and so having the ability to configure or run the Terraform needs or whatever more closely to the cluster YAML would be fantastic because we do a, uh, a non-trivial amount of uh, terraforming, which hurts me on the inside. Um, so some sort of support for that where, like, here's my environment before, now I'm ready for COPS, because there's great support for, like, here's my VPC, which is fantastic, we've utilized to, like, bring things in faster but like more generic, and then post-COPS there's requirements where we are uh, actually spinning up internal load balancers to then go and like block the uh, external accessible load balancers because we don't want our cube API publicly exposed. And then uh, t the second thing is for some of our lo logging requirements, we've had to uh, really utilize that, uh, like that post-startup script to do awful things with log volumes and mounting EBS volumes. And it's, uh, so some more customization around actual instance configuration would be uh, really helpful for us. And yeah, yeah. That's, that's great. I want to throw Rodrigo on the spot here. <laughs> I think Rodrigo is talking about like similar things. So I, I, I think those are really super valid. And I think you guys should talk. And it would be great to have you guys, like to have your contributions as well. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> for the record, uh, we also wrap cops. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, we need to solve that problem. <laughs> Yeah, I think maybe documentation related, but um, we, we wrap COPS completely in a product almost on top of it. Uh, and we open source a bunch of, pro, uh, bunch of components that we found sort of lacking in COPS. And actually, uh, it's uh, under Keiko Proj um, at Intuit. And uh, one of the things we found is a lot of the config options are clearly hard to find. <laughs> We've actually had to go through the code um, and figure out where they are and yes. what they should be and what works and what doesn't work. For example, you know, if you scale a cluster and you want bigger etcd volumes or you want IOPS changes in etcd volumes, that actually doesn't work, but it's actually there. Uh, it doesn't actually apply. It happily takes the config, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, so that, uh, that kind of problems like uh, are, um, you know, it's unclear what configs work how or in which conditions. Um, some sort of like uh, when they work and when they may not work would be good in documentation. Yeah, and, and a lot of those things, uh, one of the core problems is that they're, for those flags specifically, yeah. there's not auto-generated docs based on those right. in, in, in many cases that, um, you know, like, in, yeah, in some okay. spots. There, there are some. Um, that I think we could do a lot better with. I agree. Yeah, I'll, I'll plug in uh, Keiko Project because Keiko Project is a bunch of components for cluster management that we found useful, and one of them is uh, in, uh, Update Manager, which improves r rolling updates significantly by running a CRD in the cluster, and that's open source. Um, that's available under Keiko Project. How do you, can you spell it for yeah. us? Yeah, K-E-I-K-O. P R O J. It's uh, it's we just open source that whole project, and there's a bunch of tooling in there, including add-on manager, which is another could, concept that we. <laughs> could you open an issue with a lot of that yeah, stuff? That sure. would be fantastic yeah. to share with us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Jeez, thanks very much, guys. Um, two things that came from my team were, uh, at the moment, we're trying to do a more GitOps delivery pattern for configuring cops. It's a bit of a struggle. Um, we've had to do some very, very evil things with synchronising S3 buckets and Git repos, and it's been very complicated. It looks like some of the stuff with Cluster API and some of the developments down that's going to address that in a different, potentially better way. But right now, it's, it feels very janky trying to apply a GitOps pattern to managing your COPS clusters and making sure it's consistent how you think it is. Um, that's something that's been burning us a little bit. And a, a wish list from my personal one is um, host names. Uh, host names including IGs or something like that would be very, very beneficial for our just general incident practice. Sorry, wait, um, I missed the second one. There's, there's a couple of incidents. I know there's a couple of um, issues already open on the project and there's people working on that, but that's just a sort of a, my attempt at a plus on one on an open incident. Or it's an open um, issue. On what specifically? Um, more configurable host names. Oh. Uh, 
you can set host names. That's actually built in to DNS controller, DNS. Uh, you mean like the, the node names? Yeah, sorry, the node names, yes. Yeah. It, that's, that's, it's, a, that's a long, yes, it's. A, yes, that one. That yes. would be a great, yes. I, I hope we can make progress on that. Agreed. Yes, the, uh, and there is a doc around the GitHub, the, sorry, the GitOps workflow and uh, how it's supposed to work. So it could be another one where it's another like open an issue or talk, because I think some people are using GitOps workflows, I'm sure, in this room, so we can collaborate and figure out what doesn't work. And it's certainly not, you're supposed to use replace, and it's certainly not uh, just like apply, but it's, uh, it's supposed to get closer. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hi. Um, thanks for all the information. It's really nice to see the, the uh, new energy in, in COPS. Um, but my, I think my wish for 2020 would be a node group called etcd to have etcd run outside of the masters and perhaps with a merger of etcd manager and etcd am it it will be possible i always cringe when i have to roll a master which is also an etcd node uh, because when doing changes that are not affecting etcd only the master that's a yeah, that's, that's a great, great feature bus. yeah, yeah. Please. Take one. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think there's one. But. Good, thanks. thanks. Oh. Yeah, so I didn't see any mention of vSphere on there as like a target. Um, is there any momentum along those lines or anybody that's. There, so there is some vSphere code that is in the tree. It's less. Uh, I, I don't believe it currently is. Certainly not tested, and therefore it is highly probable that it is not functional. I think it, it is close. So if you did want to, that would be a good thing to do. I think it would also be, that's one of the ones which I'm hoping we can, uh, it's similar with DigitalOcean, right? When we get cluster API, those have more active, or those have active providers uh, for, for uh, cluster API, and perhaps we can leverage the cluster API support so that we don't have to continue to support an entry. But if it is important to you to run on vSphere, we've talked about the idea of adopting a configuration that's important to you. That would be a bigger adoption ask than just like start a thing that tests with Calico or something that tests with Weave. But uh, it would be very welcome to see that, that happen. But it, it may also happen via the cluster API. I think we have time for one more. OK. Last wishes <laughs> before lunch. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I would like to see a more flexible way of at least for the CNI and DNS to make it easier to follow upstream faster, which is uh, making the deployment YAML or the daemon set YAML for the, um, easier to change and uh, add new variables when they release new versions to it. Right now we're um, compiling our own COPS version that we call Spock, the reverse, and add our own <laughs> stuff to it. I can't believe you came up with that name. That's excellent. The, uh, I think that's a great, uh, that is a great uh, point, and I think that is actually what uh, cluster add-ons should help a lot with that. Um, you will be able to replace, hopefully, an add-on that is currently baked in with one that's external. You should, you know, if you have things that can be expressed as add-ons that are currently in Terraform or external, you may be able to express those as add-ons, and we want to be very open to that. And the, the, those add-ons should also work across the whole <coughs> ecosystem, so it isn't not only is COPS not going to act as a, like, it must have been compiled into COPS, but it's not just the COPS project that will produce that. And hopefully, for example, in the dream scenario, Core DNS will maintain its own add-on. And so as they, they know best how to do it, and as they develop new versions, they will release the add-ons at exactly the same time. So. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think, thank you. Yeah. I think that's all, but um, we're going to hang out uh, here after the talk if anyone has any questions. And also, if anyone's interested in um, getting started as a contributor or wants to get more involved, uh, we're probably going to get lunch you know, by the vendor showcase or something. Uh, and you're welcome to join us and ask questions and chat. So thank you all for coming out. Thanks, everyone.